Hello everyone, Rick here with a cultural index on a species that rounds out the Zindi from Star Trek The Primates. It may be a little late, but I got round to it eventually. In prior videos we've already covered the Great Zindi Diaspora, where a series of explosions detonated under the crust by the reptilian and insectoid Zindi resulted in the destruction of their homeworld, Zindus, and led to the deaths of the avian species and many others who failed to evacuate. The species then drifted unguided throughout space for a time until the Sphere Builders aided them to find a refuge and to quell the strife among them for a new future. Of course, this was all so that they could gain their own puppet species to act on their behalf. Biologically, the primate Zindi are the closest to humans, in being that they're evolved from primates. They share 99.5% of their DNA with their neighbouring Zindi, however, and share the same cranial patterns seen on the others and cheekbone ridges. Their hairline began much higher up than a human's, and as a result was often swept back with no fringe. They lack the more pronounced facial features of the arboreal Zindi, and substantially less facial hair. It is unknown if Zindi primates can actually grow beards, as evident when Dagra's hair was artificially aged in the Stratagem episode, while he did not end up with even a day's growth of stubble. Their skin tones shared the same diversity as humans and Vulcans, ranging from pale pinks to deep browns, but the majority seem to have darkened hair. To best understand the primates, it's beneficial to compare their temperaments to the other Zindi species, as we only have a few first-hand examples of the primates. Whereas the insectoid and reptilians were often more aggressive and argumentative, the primates were often more diplomatic and measured. They had a similar slow, deliberating way of thinking as the arboreals, to whom they were closest in biology as well as thought, but whereas the arboreals were far more chill about things, the primates were best described as simply more restrained with their emotions, although they too often found the aquatic tendencies to ponder things for too long an irritating trait, and the primates themselves could occasionally seem as stubborn as a reptilian. Because of their closeness, the primates and arboreal Zindi were often found on the same side of arguments among the council, even before and during the Zindi Civil War. The primates were regarded as talented engineers and tinkerers, and if they are the ones who built the majority of Zindi society, then they show a proficiency in nation building too. Whereas the arboreal Zindi respected higher thoughts of scientific endeavours and philosophy, the primates' application of knowledge was seemingly more focused on the practical. This earned them a reputation for being honest, and generally, their arguments were well thought out. The primates are described as being the second species of Zindi to have gained true intelligence, the first being the aquatics. Quite what this defines is unknown, as this would have been over the course of untold epochs, but one can imagine they established the earliest societies on Zindus. Because of this early superiority, and the fact that the only other truly quotes intelligent life was waterbound, the primate Zindi had unmatched superiority of the land, and even after the emergence of the other species, the primates retained majority control. This led to a long period of Zindus' history where the primates were the ruling caste, often to the point of ruthless oppression, which sparked generations of loathing from the other Zindi. To this day, the reptilian Zindi in particular despise the primates for this time of sovereignty, and now view the primates as being arrogant as a show of strength to cover their otherwise weak physical stature. By the 22nd century, many Zindi primates retain positions of power over the other races, but are more cooperative since the diaspora and the unification that their resettling required. Despite this, there is reputedly a train of thought shared by many primates that the other Zindi species were more limited in their thinking and that the cooperation established would not last should species like the insectoids or reptilians rise to dominance. Sounds like they wanted equality without actually wanting equality. That being said, they are also the ones who built the human destroying super weapon, so that seems a rather hypocritical opinion to me. Despite having such a hierarchical past, the Zindi primates now tend to leave the military matters to the reptilians, while they operate the bureaucracy and the political aspects of the Zindi Council. Also, it may be due to their history 
coupled with their pragmatic application of innovation, but they were among the first to begin to doubt the sincerity of the Guardians who had supposedly watched over them. It's revealed by Temporal Agent Daniels that by the 26th century the Zindi are members of the United Federation of Planets, and this joining is expanded on in other works to have occurred around 2311, but they remained rather isolationist as they were still attempting to sort out their own differences and locate a suitable new homeworld. By 2409 they had emerged properly into the UFP community and there was an increase in Zindi serving within Starfleet. When it came to the outfits and the design of primate clothing, the image was to create a more official look to them that suggested its strength and a sort of proud standing, hence the slightly European 17th to 19th century militaristic look to reflect this past. Each high collared suit was accompanied by a harness, belt and pips on the shoulders that may have depicted rank. One of the only primate ships we see is the Atalith class cruiser. All Zindi vessels could utilise the subspace tunnel network within the Delphic Expanse, which was a byproduct of the sphere builders, and this was no exception. It was rather manoeuvrable but packed a lot of firepower, making it a strong defensive craft patrolling Zindi systems while the reptilian vessels were more likely to be sent away on military missions. The large central dome contained most of the ship's functions, while the prongs on the vessel are unknown. Pure speculation, but as many of these Zindi ships have these features, perhaps there's some sort of array that opens the subspace vortices. There is also a much smaller Zindi vessel, slightly larger than a runabout, called a Nasuti class, one of which was operated by Degra. This ship was used to observe weapons testing and included a small crew of around a dozen but could be run by only three. The centre actually resembled a sort of office space, complete with individual desks lined up in a row, with the overseer's position at the rear, and from here the captain would be able to see everyone's screens, including the one playing Gallagher. Personally, I think this reflects the stuffy and bureaucratic nature often associated with the primates. They also shared in the use of bioplasmic weaponry, developed by the reptilians, and utilised it in their ship's offensive capabilities. As respected engineers, it's likely, however, that Zindi primates had a hand in the construction of multiple other Zindi vessels operated by their brethren species, and they in theirs. The common Zindi language spoken is in fact the original language of the primates, spread due to their historical dominance of the others, although many learn aquatic and insectoid as these Zindi lack the ability to converse in the common tongue. The naming structure of Zindi primates seems to possess only one name. Hura, Degra, Thalin, Deepak and Kesik are male names, while Onaara, Jaina, Trinia and Peral are female names. So that rounds out all the Zindi species. Because of the variation brought in by the five distinct races of Zindi, we only get a relatively small sample size of each of their vastly different species, so many observations are likely tainted by the observation of only a few people. And the Zindi primates perhaps personify this most accurately in their closeness to humans, that they are just that, people. All the information I've drawn up here is from both the show and apocryphal content, but there are always going to be those who buck the trends, perhaps the primates most of all. Thanks for watching this cultural index on the primate Zindi. Kinda sorry it took so long to get, but hey, look at all the other amazing species we got to cover. Like the, say, Bajorans from Star Trek, or maybe the infamous Tusken Raiders of Tatooine from Star Wars. Wait, I haven't done those? Well then, votes should be over on the community tab already, so let me know what you'd like to see, and feel free to suggest more in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, I've been Rick, and I'll see you again later. Goodbye.